Could this bring China in trouble and the whole financial system also collapsing? Well, this might be the big black swan event for China with what's currently going on with China Evergrande. Just a couple of days ago, there was this funny event where a black swan was landing or walking around at the Tiananmen Square, which many Chinese netizens actually interpreted as a bad omen of something bad is going to happen. And here we have it, protests in merch of China against Evergrande Group, which is a big holding company and mainly a property developer. And the big issue here is that this company is having lots of assets under management and has taken out lots of debt and loans uh, for that uh, more than 300 billion US dollars worth of loans. So that is quite a big amount. And now we have issues that some of the loan payments, the interest payments on those loans actually um, are due and possibly there is a liquidity crisis. Um, well, surely there is one, uh, not quite sure to which extent actually. And, and so the bonds are coming down. The share price has been collapsing of Evergrande Group. And there are people out there um, causing social unrest because they are at the front doors of the group and protesting. They want their money back. So possibly they have been investing in some of those financial products that the company is also offering. Now the big question here is, could this lead to the collapse of China or also um, the entire global uh, financial system? And what effects would this have on our stocks? Well, here's my take. First of all, um, I always stayed away from the Chinese um, property market in general. Living in China, I noticed well, how much people are actually paying just for their properties. And, and you see some pictures here in the background of um, yeah, some footage on the ground in China, like with all of those new buildings. Of course, there has been tremendous um, success stories in the market of people investing in such kind of apartments, but also in being involved in the property industry. And so, yes, there seems to be something going wrong there and overheating. And once again, my personal take was always like, um, I don't like the prices I'm seeing out there for what kind of a quality I'm seeing um, when living there. So usually, um, yeah, those high rise buildings, uh, even though they have been new, usually the quality isn't always that great. And still the prices are outrageous if you look in cities like Shanghai and Beijing. And so, and so it's kind of crazy to me to see um, that um, people are actually managing to pay down um, deposits and actually pay back um, those uh, yeah, big prices and fees on those kind of apartments. And of course, I also know many Chinese who made quite a bit of a living there um, in terms of buying houses early, selling them later on. It's kind of a, uh, a pyramid scheme, if you will. Yeah, because people frankly need to be able to find buyers for these buildings again uh, in order to resell them at a higher price. And then there ha you have also this uh, cultural phenomenon that you need kind of to have uh, your car ready, your house ready and a good earning job in order to be able to marry and such. Uh, yeah, the parents are helping putting down these deposits and so on. And, and so it's all a big different story in uh, China compared to where I come from. But, but of course, there are also big uh, inflated housing prices. I've studied in London. I also know the culture of buying property in London and uh, taking out loans for that and mortgages. And these are huge prices as well, also affected by um, foreigners coming into the market and buying property up there. Um, the, also the housing prices in the US are certainly inflated. And so um, that doesn't necessarily mean um, even those prices are up that um, this cannot go on and on for years. So I would say I would call it too early for um, a huge collapse of the housing market in China. For, for Evergrande Group, certainly we see financial struggles, but um, on the other hand, they might be able to um, sell off some of their assets and um, pay back some of those loans, um, rotate them into um, further expiration and uh, payback interest later. And of course, the financials are looking unhealthy and they're doing strange stuff like, for instance, going into the EV sector and pitching that they want to 
bring out their own EV, which I think is rather sketchy, to be honest. And so these are maybe some of the attempts trying to refinance themselves. I also frankly do believe that uh, none of the automakers like NIO and so on, which have been rumored to be interested in Evergrande's group assets, uh, I don't think that is the case. And so yes, for Evergrande, it may become very tough in the next coming weeks and months as the banks will not be able to or willing to give them new loans and fresh money. But is this really a black swan event? Um, well, out of the definition that black swan events usually happen suddenly and have been flying under the radar, I would say no, this doesn't fit the category um, Evergrande, although um, yeah, the extent of it is really big and could cause a Lehman type of an issue in terms of you know a domino effect and sending shockwaves out into the financial system in China, but also beyond that. Um, it certainly is a big issue, but it's not uh, unexpected. And certainly also the Chinese regulators are um, yeah, having a look at it. And certainly if you see pic pictures like that where people are protesting, um, then it is at the focus also of authorities there. And so I would say my big guess is here that there will be ways of curbing the effects and the issues um, around this on China. Um, on the other hand, um, if this would actually escalate and maybe escalate also in a very quick manner, um, be aware that this will not only affect China, this uh, the size of the trillions in assets and uh, billions in debt here, um, there are certainly also overseas investors involved and that could cause liquidity crisis sending shockwaves also into the US. And that frankly could bring down markets globally, also uh, NEO stock price, even also other uh, US equities uh, as well. So um, be aware of that, that this is certainly something to monitor closely. Um, but it's certainly uh, not yet the bubble burst in and it's also not certainly a black swan type of event. So these are my thoughts around that. Uh, definitely going to watch that one closely, um, whether or not uh, the distress is uh, going on. And I think also that might be one of the reasons why uh, the Chinese authorities are going out there and trying to deleverage the whole economy in terms of um, finding over leveraged um, assets and investors, um, finding um, speculation, for instance, in the area of cryptocurrencies and so on, and uh, cracking down on these things. So the Evergrande story here may actually pay into um, the reasons of why all of this is also unfolding, um, but not saying yet that this is certainly going to be a popping bubble there, although the housing market, once again, in my point of view, feels very bubbly in China, but also in other parts of the world. So what do you think about it? Let me know your comments below and then smash a like and see you in the next one.